There. Okay. Great. Um, of course, as soon as it goes to record, I start getting nervous. That's what happens. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, thanks for being here, Ingrid and Sam. And we might have a few people join us as well. So this is our pitch tips workshop. Um, and it's also being recorded for anyone who wants to watch afterwards as well. So um, I'm Miranda McLean. I think both Ingrid and Sam, you both, both know me, especially Sam. Um, I run the connector program for the Western REN or the Western Regional Enterprise Network. That's always a, a nice mouthful. Um, I've been there since last April, so almost a year now. It seems seems crazy now. Time goes by so fast. Um, but yeah, so, um, and the Connector Programs works with skilled job seekers in the Western region. And we work with, the Western region for us is, we work with the municipality and town of Digby, uh, municipality of Clare, municipality and town of Yarmouth, the municipality of Argyle and the municipality of Barrington. So that's kind of our, our region in my catchment region as well. Um, I work with skilled job seekers and I connect them to business or community uh, leaders in their field. So depending on what um, field the, a person is going into, I'd connect them. It's more like an in-personal networking. So um, they can meet together, they get a chance to ask one on one questions with either a potential employer or someone who is has been in their shoes kind of before and are able to give them some advice and, and maybe some more network connections. So that's my program. Um, and through my program, we have decided to do something called the Hire Me Western. So what this is, is a video pitch competition where skilled job seekers in the region make 30 to 60 second long pitches of why employers um, would want to hire them. So essentially about they would include themselves, any kind of skills, their educational background, training, experience, um, things like that, any kind of creativity to, to put their name out there. In a world where we're behind the screen a lot, um, and your name, when you're submitting a resume, depending on the job, there could be, you know, 10, 20 resumes. This can kind of help people have a face behind their resume, get, get out there, get noticed. We've had a lot of employers who are interested in this too. So they are looking right now. Um, so that's what the, in a nutshell, what the Harmony Western is. It's for skilled job seekers. So um, what that means is some post-secondary or some specialized training. So specialized training could be lots of different things. It could be sales, uh, management, um, IT, computer, trades, um, even uh, I used to be a lifeguard. That is pretty specific. I mean, there's a lot of training that goes into that or, you know, a PSW, a personal support worker. Um, you know, something like that. So that's kind of what specialized training means. Um, yeah, so this workshop is, I have notes if you can see that I'm looking at them now too. Um, so what this workshop is, is how to kind of pitch yourself. So it's, it's geared towards doing a pitch for this competition, but it could also be for any time. When you're doing any kind of networking, having this kind of um, pitch about yourself it's really helpful to get your name out there so people remember you, remember, you know, who you are. Um, also, if you're doing any kind of business, this could be good. You're going to need to have that kind of pitch. Um, and a lot of times things are online too. It, you know, networking is online. Um, it Job interviews are now online. There, there's a lot of stuff. So having some tips about you know, even, you know, camera settings or anything like that is, is always, always good to have too. Uh, okay, so I did my seal in way less time, which is what happens. <laughs> um, so I will let Ingrid introduce herself. So this is Ingrid Dion, and she is the CEO and founder of WordCraft uh, Incorporated. So she, uh, she can give you everyone some background with her. Thanks. Yeah, cool. Well, thanks for inviting me to um, to be a part of this. Um, so 
a bit about my background. So I run a company called WordCraft. It's a social media marketing agency. And we're headquartered in Yarmouth, Nova Scotia. Uh, but we work with clients right now across Canada. Um, and I'm just starting, I'm on a virtual trade mission to Boston right now. So starting to put feelers out there in the United States as well. Um, but we work with large corporations as well as, as uh, small businesses. So we work with Nestle Canada and Kraft Heinz and Manulife Bank, um, Ontario Cannabis Store. And, but we also work with small businesses like locally, like Dion Oysters, um, Besh Nutraceutical, they're a sea cucumber company. We work with an alpaca firm in Cape Breton. So really, I, I love variety. So we work with a whole bunch of different um, different companies, but it's always about um, organic social media. Um, so I have made, uh, it's it's funny when Miranda asked me to talk about pitches, I was like, well, I don't, I, I don't know if I've done much more than like one or two pitches in my life. However, I am on calls all the time. So I have made a point that I will meet with anyone. Um, so I will get on a 30 minute Zoom call with anyone, anytime, um, whether they are my ideal client or not. We primarily work with um, companies that are in the consumer packaged goods space. Um, but even if they're not, even if they don't own a consumer packaged good company, a, a product company, then I'll still jump on a call with them because it's an opportunity for me to tell them about what I do really well. And then even if it's not the right fit for me and them, they, they might then be in a room with someone or on a Zoom call with someone and they say, you know, I really need someone to help me market my, uh, my makeup brand and I uh, really need some help with social media. And they're like, oh, I was just on this call with Ingrid and she's awesome. And so they'll mention my name in the right room and um, then a match is made. So my, I, I was in a program where the business coach always said, stay open to the magic. So this is how I stay open to the magic is by meeting with anyone, just talking to them, telling them about what I do. And in those situations, I'm never, I never think that it's like a pitch because I'm never trying to sell myself to or sell my, my services to someone if they don't need them. I'm just trying to find out what they need. And if it aligns with what I do, then great. But if it doesn't, then fine. Like I'll get on calls with people and they'll say, I really need some help with the SEO of my website. Like that's not me, but maybe I can recommend someone. Um, it's only if, you know, if it's that very little niche, the organic social media strategy content, that's where, that's where my zone of genius is. And if what they're looking for is outside of that, then, you know, we don't need to, I don't need to pitch myself to them because it's, it's not the right fit. And, uh, I just want to make sure that they're clear on what I do so that they can then mention me when they hear of someone who's looking for what I do. Um, so. I have a few slides that I will share. Um, and the first one really aligns with what I was just saying, treat it as a conversation. And I know that the pitches for the Hire Me Western are um, like pre-recorded, so it's not necessarily a conversation, but a lot of the time your job interview uh, is, a, is a conversation. Um, and even sometimes like I've been on pitch competitions where you have uh, maybe a rehearsed pitch, but then there's time for a question and answer afterwards. So it doesn't have to be something scary. Pitch sounds scary. Like the first one that I did, I was terrified, um, but it shouldn't be scary. It's just a, it's just a com conversation. You're just chatting. It's give and take. You, you talk about what you really do well, what your zone of genius is. They talk about what they need. If the two align, there's a match, great. If not, it's just a new person that you've met and you found out what, what they're looking for. They found out what you really excel at. And that's cool. Like it's just networking. Um, so the same goes for like, if you're now that the world is opening up again and there are networking events, um, if you're in that situation, you know, talk to someone and have a conversation. It doesn't have to be scary. You're just 
and as an introvert, I'm saying this, <laughs> it doesn't have to be scary, you're just talking. Um, so definitely don't treat it as like, I really need to sell myself to this person because you don't know for sure if you are exactly what they need. It's gonna be like, it's gonna be a conversation. Um, another tip is to tell a story. Now I know in these pitches it's quite short, so you really just have to pick one experience, maybe two at the most, um, that you can talk about. Now, for if I use myself in, a, in as an example, um, you know, people often ask, oh, "Okay, tell me how you got started, or tell me about yourself." That doesn't necessarily mean that they want my whole life story or they want my whole career story. Um, they want to know why I'm really good at social media strategy and content creation. So I got to talk about what's relevant to that, some experiences. Like, you know, I used to work at a marketing agency. I was manager of social. One of our big clients was Nestle Canada. And when I left um, to start my own business, Nestle Canada followed me. So they became one of my first clients. Um, so that just demonstrates that, yeah, I, I, I guess I am pretty good at this because a, a large uh, multinational corporation followed me from a pretty big um, marketing agency to my own business that was really just me as a freelancer when I first started. Now I have employees, but when I first started, it was just me. So, so they left, the, Nestle stopped working with the big agency and just came to me. Um, so it's something that speaks to the fact that number one, you, you know, you're, you're good at what you say you are good at, like, you know, your stuff and, um, and, and it speaks to that like trust factor. So they, they can trust you because you've demonstrated that maybe another company trusted you to do something. So maybe it's a story about your work life. Um, maybe it's, you know, something that you did that really helped the business. Um, that you work for, maybe it's a, a story from school, um, any kind of story that speaks to what you want to to um, to communicate, right? So, if you want them to hire you for a certain um, a certain skill, then tell a story about how you got that skill, or 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 what makes you like one of the best at that skill. Um, because stories really help to illustrate it and it's memorable right if you tell a story people will remember that when I tell that Nestle story people are like oh yeah she's the one who um, who Nestle followed after she left the the agency um, so yeah tell a story one maybe two but yeah just a little short story have some little snippets um, and sell yourself as a solution so why, why would they want to hire you? Um, why do you want to do this? Why, did you, why are you interested in this? And what can you do to help um, that business get forward? So what can, what can you help them solve? What, can you, what kinds of skills do you bring to the table? How will that help their business? Employers want to uh, like it's this is here's a story um three of my hires have been people who have showed up at my door and said can you hire me these are the things that i do so uh, please don't come to my door <laughs> and tell me to hire you but it's happened three times <laughs> i'm not saying that i want this to happen all the time but um but yeah, my first hire happened when my friend who I had hired before, I hired her when I worked at the marketing agency. Um, she showed up, she showed up at my door and said, I'm so tired of my current job. I want to work for you. Can you hire me? <laughs> and so I thought about it for a moment and was like, uh, yeah, what can you help me do? And so she started rattling off the things, you know, we had worked together before. So she started rattling off the things, well, I'll help you with community management. I'll help you with the copy editing. Um, I'll help you with copywriting. I'll, you know, she's just naming off things. Okay, yeah, I can see that. I can see that. I can see me wanting that. So 
you need to be a solution. A second person who showed up at my door said they wanted me to hire them. Well, what can you do? And he said, I'm a photographer and designer. And I was thinking, okay, right now I do all the photography and design. I would love to hand that off to someone. I didn't know that I needed a photographer and designer, but she showed up and said that that's what she does. And, um, and lo and behold, I could use that. So that's how she came on board. And then another person showed up last week and said, I need some work. Um, can you hire me part-time? Here are the things that I can do. Um, I can help you with admin. So I spend a lot of time on my emails, my calendar, my files, my um, invoices, um, all of that kind of stuff, payroll. I was like, yeah, I can hand some of that stuff off. So tell, tell the employer what you can do for them. That's, this is what, uh, that's what I'm, I'm getting at, essentially. Um, what can you solve? How can you help them? How can you take things off of their plate? Like her personally, I love that. If you can take something off my plate, because my plate is very full, I have many plates on many burners. Um, so if you can take something off my plate, that's great. I will give you money for that. So <laughs> definitely sell yourself as the solution, figure out what you can solve. And my last point is be confident. So I definitely believe that you should practice your pitch, especially if it's pre-recorded. Practice makes perfect. However, I don't think it should be too rehearsed because nothing turns me off more than, than robotic, right? If you're too rehearsed, you're just rattling it off. You're not really thinking about it. You're just, you're being a robot. You're just parroting it. Um, I love it when people are natural and also confident and somewhat rehearsed. Um, there's like a sweet spot there where you're still speaking naturally. You're saying a few ums, that's okay. You're being casual. Um, like I do, and but you know what you're talking about. Like you know your pitch really well, but you're not saying it like a robot. So that's what I really like. And I like that in all aspects, in, in a webinar. I hate it when people are just reading off something. Don't read it, it's boring. And people lose attention. People are much more engaged when you're talking and you're being animated and you're you know, showing some passion and some confidence, that is what is really, that, that's what grabs people and um, it makes them want to work with you. Like if, you, if, if you're confident about what you can do, that instills confidence from an employer. Um, so absolutely know your pitch, know what you're going to talk about. Um, be ready for questions and stuff because especially in a job interview, you can't anticipate what they're going to ask you, but be confident in what you want to communicate and be ready to, to be nimble and to answer those questions that people ask you. Uh, confidence is key. You gotta be confident in what you can do, how you can solve their problems, um, what you're really good at. Um, and yeah, and have fun, absolutely. That's the probably the most important part is to enjoy it because yeah, it is fun. It isn't scary. It's fun. <laughs> so I think that those were all of the um, the slides that I had, and those were the points that I wanted to bring up. I don't know if that was too short or not, but a lot of nuggets crammed into a few minutes. No, I think that was perfect. I think that was. Uh... I don't know if you saw me. I took a couple notes because I really like. Oh, awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I liked um, connections are everywhere because that's part of, of my program too, but also um, my life. Like, you know, my parents have always said, never burn a bridge, right? So you always yeah. you keep those connections. And even if you're leaving a job or even if you don't need necessarily need that work or, or that connection right now, word of mouth goes a long way. Uh, especially in a rural community. So you Absolutely. never know when someone's going to say, oh, did you think about that person for this? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And there, there are people like yourself who are connectors by trade. Um, so it's great to, to get, um, you know, to get to know some of those people. Um, 
yeah, I know a lady on the South Shore, Bernice. She's a, she's a connector and, and she's great. She, she knows everyone, um, probably like yourself. And if you, you're, you mentioned, you know, some kind of, some sort of field that you're interested in or whatever it is. And she says, oh yeah, I know this person and this person, this person, and she'll connect you. So there's a lot of people like that. Those people are great to, to get to know. Yeah, exactly. And they could be in a whole different field than you're even looking, but if you don't open yourself up, you know, you can never meet them. Yeah. Staying open to the magic. Exactly. <laughs> um, I really liked relevant examples and selling yourself as a solution because that's really what employers want right now and, not, and like businesses really want. Um, and zone of genius, I thought. I, I really like that too. Like we all have our own things that we're really, really great at and they're all different. So own it and, and use it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I have a few too that I thought of. The first is everyone is nervous. So every, when you're going into a job interview, when you're doing a job pitch, when you're networking, when you're you know trying to promote your business, it's nerve wracking and it's nervous, um, but that's okay. That's the more you do it and the more you get yourself out there, the one, the more confidence you build, the better you get at it, the easier it gets. And no one is ever gonna really fault you for, for being too nervous. No one said, oh, do you know how many times she said, um, right so it's okay it's okay to be nervous make sure you know what you're saying but again being nervous that's okay uh another one again uh, reiterate practice 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 if you have your pitch and you can go off the cuff too know what you're trying to say especially if it's 30 to 60 seconds that goes by way faster than you think um so professionalism and friendliness so sometimes i worked so for, I used to be a residential supervisor um, for a small options home. I know it's crazy. So uh, sometimes when I would have people in interviews and things like that, people would, they thought being professional meant being very formal and, you know, almost stern. So I don't know where that kind of came from. You can be professional and be friendly. You know, obviously, if you're making a joke, it needs to be appropriate or you need to use appropriate language. And But you can, you know, you don't have to draw that that line of, um, you know, being stern doesn't need to have professional. So I um, agree with that one thousand um, percent, because I think a lot of people who want to work with me like the fact that I'm like sort of no nonsense, like I'm just I'm just an, a regular gal, like I'm not. I don't know, I'm not super fancy or whatever, um, but, but they appreciate that. Like, I guess I'm real and, and I encourage other people to be, just be yourself, be real. Uh, you don't have to be, yeah. You don't have to be stern, like you say. That's yeah, not, exactly. I don't know where that it. came from. I'm not sure if there's something that I'm not, but yeah, so. That doesn't need to be, you can, yeah, you can be professional and friendly and joke and, you know, again. Yeah. So. Um, oh, a, a particular one for Zoom or any virtual kinds of things, know your background. And I don't just mean like your background, but I mean your physical space. So this would be fine or, you know, minor Ingrid's would, you know, an office setting. Um, a bedroom is not really, you know, what you're going to want to put. Um, you know, make the wall behind you don't have your, you know, unmade bed or don't be laying on your couch or um, use your Zoom filters if, you know, if you need to, your video backgrounds, although make sure that you know that sometimes they fail too. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so know your physical background um, and, and where, where you're at. We've gotten, it's kind of interesting. Like I never, it, a few years ago, you wouldn't think about having a business meeting in your spare bedroom or something like that, but it happens all the time now. Uh, but no one, no one knows. So just, just be mindful of what's, you know, what's going on or if, you know, posters or anything. Yeah. That kind of stuff. Um, language. So be clear, uh, and concise and to the point. I think we've all, you know, and, and I can ramble a little bit too. I mean, that's not a big deal, but I think we've all been in a meeting or um, an interview or a conversation where you 
you're just, someone is talking so much in circles, you're not quite sure where their point went. So make your point, whatever it is. Uh, and, you know, allow for, you can tell I talk with my hands a lot too. Um, allow for antidotes and things like that, but don't let your point get lost in whatever, whatever it is that you're, what you're saying. Um, and obviously use appropriate language for, for business too. Um, know your audience and, you know, what's the target of, you know, the interview of the pitch of whatever you're doing, what is the point? Who are you trying to talk to? So myself, I have a sociology background. So if I were doing um, a pitch competition or going in for your interview, I would sell um, myself as a solution for being passionate about my community or helping others or um, something like that. If I were going into a trades, I would, you know, sell myself on, on how I know uh, I don't, I don't know anything about carpentry. So that was probably a bad <laughs> example, but whatever I would know, you know, what scale a roof is or, you know, whatever it is that, that to get my point across. So know who you're talking to. Um, and a few, just a few other ones uh, to go along with language. Um, and I think in Ingrid, you talked a little about this specialize. Um, in what you're saying so use an example of something so instead of saying um yeah i'm you know i really like sociology i really like social issues well, what you know what is a specific example in my community that i'm passionate about i'm on the community health board that's something you know whatever it is for for people um use a specific example so it gets your point across and it uh, lets them know that you know what you're talking about as well and it's interesting um dress code so i know there's usually not big dress codes but understand like what a professional dress code is so if you're if uh if you're going to do a video or something that you're going to stand up make sure that you're you know not doing the zoom we were just talking about this the pajama pants or or whatever on the zoom calls or um you know you're not wearing a tank top or or whatever know what the dress code is and and make sure that uh that's professional too um and be creative because that's what's going to get you noticed and, and make you stand out figure out your your story or your pitch line or um if you're going to use if it's something for a video when you want to use something creative and new that i can't think of right now because i don't know but that'll make what people think of you know if people think ingrid oh nestle canada or if someone's going through um one of the top pitches for Hire Me Halifax did a video and they're looking at all these different resumes and, you know, it's like blank piece of paper. And then there's a sparkly gold one. So what is going to be your, your sparkle? Yeah. That's cute. I have another one. Um, uh, talk about your soft skills as well as your, like, your, your skills that you got in university or, you know, as job experience and, and those types of things. Like, that's great, you know, your degree, your diploma, your whatever your experience, but also if you have soft skills, like you're, you know, a really good communicator or you're very empathetic or you're, you know, really good with kids or you're whatever it is, like some of those, um, skills that aren't necessarily on a piece of paper that you got from school. Um, if you have, if you're really good at those things, definitely highlight those because a lot of employers are not only looking for like, do you have a degree in this and, you know, those types of things, but they're also looking at sort of what kind of person are you? Um, what other skills do you have that you can bring to the table? Exactly. Um, and we talked a little bit about this and, you know, I've talked to a lot, a lot of other people about this. It's a different market, right? The job market is different now. It's changing. It's, it's employee driven instead of, you know, employer driven as much as it was before. Um, a lot of employers will, um, I don't want to say take a chance, but will hire for fit rather than skill. Obviously, there's some jobs you have to have, you know, CCA, nurse, you have to have those standards. But if it's not something they have to have, someone is more likely to hire you for how well you're going to fit in and align with their company 
rather than how many you know degrees you have or how many hours you have in, in professional workshops. So, um, and it's, you know, I've taken some, some HR courses and that's what they're saying to hire for fit and then train. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. So, um, cool. oh, and also uh, I forgot to mention too, uh, although you must be at least a little, anyone watching this must be a little interested if you made it half an hour through. Um, we do have some top prizes too for the Harmony Western. Um, the top prize is a laptop, uh, a 13 inch convertible laptop. Second place is a Chromebook and third place is Apple AirPods too. So that's kind of from left fill, but at least still on the topic. Eh? That's cool. Um, so Sam, did you have any questions for us? I know that you're driving and doing a bunch of stuff too, and I put you on the spot. But if you do, just uh, feel free to jump on or send them in the chat too. Yeah. I think that's about all I have. Did you have any other advice? No, all good. Uh, all good. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for uh, for coming today, coming on Ingrid, and yeah, no worries. Thank you. Yeah, I'm really excited for this, and you know, it's it's a really interesting time to be a job seeker right now. Um, yeah. It's uh, it's definitely a different playing field than it ever has been. I also didn't realize how many baseball references I used. Um, <laughs> so, right. <laughs> but there we go. Oh. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks. And um, I'll, um, I'll stop the recording now and I'll put this online for everyone to see. And uh, we'll touch base after. Ingrid's one of our, our fantastic judges as well, too. So. <laughs> Yeah, so take your advice to heart, yeah. <laughs> yeah, be natural. Yeah, definitely. that's the biggest one, yeah. And it's hard because I, you know, everyone is nervous when, when you're doing things, but uh, yeah, yeah. everybody, everyone gets nervous and, and uh, yeah. it's better to- We've all, we've all been there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, okay, well, great, thanks cool. again and- um, oh, and thanks, Sam. Yes, yeah, she did. Yeah. And uh, we'll see you later on. Okay, cool. Thanks. See you. Bye.